In order to understand how the wave multiplier works, I think it's useful to know what it does when nothing is plugged into it. So I take the output and go to the scope, so we see what the output shows. If I start to move B, C, D, nothing is happening. Why? Because actually the wave multiplier acting like a kind of sequencer is now on step A. Here's a proof. You see if I go clockwise it's increasing voltage up to 13 volt and if I go below zero it's just minus 13 volt when at full count clockwise and other way you see how it does. So you can use it just uh, as a voltage, um, as an offsetter, so to say. It would be very useful to have a lead for each step, so we would understand way better, I think, less confusing how it works. Now I'm going to show you, if I take the comparator, I go to the clock input, and I put A full clockwise, yeah? If I now push it, it goes on B, now I'm on B step. You see if I if I move B, so if I go for, oops, did I click? Yes I did. I'm on C, now I'm on D, alright, and now I'm back to A. So if the clock is really a clock and not just a pulse I'm sending in, we see what it does when nothing is plugged into it. Huh? Just a clock now going into it, so it's clocking it. But at the input I have no signal, so what it does is just... You see A, C, B, D, okay, D. So it's a four-step sequencer. With clock divisions, now it's not following exactly the clock. The clock is divided by two now, but if I do like this, it's really following the clock, but it's to I prefer to make it slower. Divided by four. So we see what it does. So you have a sequencer. Which also can output negative voltages. Huh? Now I'm showing here in blue the signal I'm sending in the clock input of this of the wave multiplier. So this is this clock. And in pink, violet, it's always the output. I also send this output to an audio, so I can hear it, if I want. It's not exactly zero here. All steps are not exactly on zero. It's difficult to get the zero exact. Now, I increase A. Look what's happening. You see the clock? So it's just the clock divided by two, if I open only A. Now if I open C, you will see it's just the old, old the clock, so it's not divided anymore. And here you have a divider. So up it's not divided, here it's divided by 2, here it's divided by 4. And as I said, here we have all clocks, so I can even divide it by 8. Voilà. You see how A looks like and how C, uh, C looks like. But look how B, D, B and D look like. They are the exact clock now. It's either catching the rising edge or the falling edge uh, when you switch the divisions. In yellow on the scope we will see the incoming signal sent to in a or in a c in red we will see the clock sent to the clock input and in green we saw it's the output 
we saw what hap what is happening when we have no signal at the input or just a clock at the input. Clock, by the way, could be anything. Could be even a sine wave. If you want. So we saw this already. Now, if I send a signal in AC. I'm going to send a sine wave. We won't see it if on zero. We won't see it if it if I'm not on state B. If I move B, I don't see it at the output because I'm not on step B, I'm not on step C, I'm not on step D. I'm on step A. If I advance my sequencer to a step B, for instance, I will see it on step. Oh, okay, I'm step D now. Let's advance it to step A again. Well, uh, wait a minute. I didn't understand why it was stepping two steps. It's because I was on full clock. I didn't remember this anyway. If I advance one step, let's see where it is now. Now I am on step D, that's why the incoming signal on AC is going through. So don't confuse in input AC and input BD with step A, B, C, D. Huh? Don't, don't miss them if you have only one signal going at the input. So I'm on step D, I'm going to advance. Now I'm on step A. One step. And nothing on the others. Huh? All right. So this is when I'm going to go back to step A. Voilà. Now I'm on step A. One signal going in AC. Let's look at the output. We see that the output is unipolar. So there is some clipping between input and output in the circuit. If I sequence it, if I sequence now this the sequencer, if I send a clock, we see a signal going through only when at A because only A is open. If I open B, st stage B, it's also sending on B, C. D. As you see, it's going through at the output. But we have only the positive signal now because I'm positive here. If I put B on negative, we see that the output can be negative. What I like to do is to go through a rectifier because all waveforms coming up from these oscillators are bipolar and we see that between input and output it's only unipolar because of the clipping. So what I do is I send my audio signal to the rectifier and I take the output of the rectifier, send it to the input again. So now my waveform at the output will be way more richer. I'm going to stop the sequencer. I'm on step C. All right. I stopped it and it stopped on C. Huh? Okay. If I look at the output, I see now a way more richer waveform with all, even the negative part goes positive here. 
and now I can really do whatever I want with this when I use the wave multiplier mode which is sending a clock into it a fast clock of course and now I can form it however I want And what I like to do is not taking an external clock but taking the input signal, the signal, the audio signal I send to the input AC, I'm going to take this same signal and send it to the clock. So now I have a very, very nice steady waveform that I can shape as I like. Sending a, a, a different signal to input BD would we would have something like this. Even more shapeable. We could sync also VCO2 So here I'm sending a sine wave and a sine wave into the inputs. Remember that on Phoenix 2D triangle is a sine wave and of course I could send a different signal at the input. I'm going to show you first only input AC when it's not rectified. I forgot. Not rectified would mean it looks like this. Sending a different signal in BD, different frequency, different signal. So you see it's not as rich, it, it's cool as, as well, but it's not as rich as when the signal in AC is rectified. Triangle wave, so tooth. We go, we go we go to uh, Bukla 259-261 territories. I hear this kind of waveforms we have on the 259.
I can really have strange waveform, wave shapes, which are way more interesting. Reminds me of the Buckler 259 or 261, where you really fold the signal actually, shape it like you want, as you want, as you like. The wave multiplier being a step sequencer is also acting like a sequential switch. I'm gonna show you. In yellow we will have on the scope the signal coming into AC. In blue we will have the signal going into input BD. Uh, in red we will have the clock the signal coming into the clock input and in uh, green we will have the output of the wave multiplier I'm sending here a signal into the input AC it's a saw tooth we saw already that it's only the positive side of the waveform which appears at the output Now I'm on step C. I'm going to advance the sequencer. I'm going to make it negative, positive, negative. So we see a difference when I advance. Now I'm on step D. Step A again. Step B. So what we observe is that when you have no signal coming into input BD, you have the signal going into AC on all four steps. So if I sequence it, I will hear it on the four steps. I make it very slow now, the clock, I make the clock very slow. We see yeah, on all four steps we have the signal. But as soon as I plug a signal into input BD then it will act different. I send in input AC a SOTUS as we see here. on yellow and we see also a bit of leaking wait yeah we see some leaking on B because there is no signal going into B if I send a, for instance a square wave into input BD It's acting like a sequential switch. Signal at step B and D is the one coming into input BD and it's kind it's quite clean. The signal going into AB
which is a saw tooth, is not so clean. It gets a bit of leaking from from I from the input BD. It's the same on my Phoenix 2, the original. Now showing you the divider. Here, this is the original clock speed when it's up, divided by 2, incoming clock divided by 2, incoming clock divided by 4. Signal at A is shoot at falling edge. Now if I look, if I move the, if I switch down the division, now it cuts the rising edge, not the falling edge. I'm going to show you with input BC, which is a square. It's shooting at falling edge. If I move the divider, it's shooting at rising edge. So you can play with this kind of, how should I say, the sound you will get at the output depends if you catch AC at rising edge or falling edge. It, of course you can just switch it as you like. You could also invert A, B and B, D inputs of course. So I just wanted to show you something special that I noticed. I'm going to show you now how the delay is acting. I'm going to plug only a signal. Let's take a square wave. A signal at input AC. I let it through on step A. I slow the clock. I'm gonna catch the f rising edge to show you what I want to show you. Voila. If I move now, the delay. You can observe how A is gonna be delayed, is gonna swift to the right compared to the rising edge of the clock in this example. You see it's going shorter and shorter. This is to show you visually what the delay does. Actually what it does is delaying between the end of step D and start of step A. This is what it does. You could imagine it as a, like a pulse width modulation for instance. But it's only, it's only delaying between the end of D and start of A. So it's only delaying a step, so to say. It doesn't affect B, C or D. If I send a different signal in, uh, a signal now in B, D input, make it slow, it will only delay A. only one step of four steps. Now you will see I'm inverting A here so you see it better it's the one down here and you will see that it will be delayed only A will be delayed if I move the delay. So you see it's adding some silence because 
at the end of day D and the start of A are just blank now. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you about the delay. And as we saw this, you could also play with the CV input for the delay time. I'm gonna show you. Plug in a signal into the CV time of delay. I'm gonna make the wave shape a bit richer. Instead of taking an external clock, I'm gonna take the same signal as the input AC. And I'm gonna take some nice sine wave on both inputs first. I'm gonna I did show previously that I like to rectify my one of the signals first before going into the input so the waveform is even richer. We'll see with the clock what we do if we take the non-rectified signal or if we take the rectified. I never tried so. We'll see if I take the clock rectified or not. Yeah, it's different, very different. So this is non... Oh, wait. Yeah, this is rectified signal going into the clock input. It's different than non-rectified. So it's better non-rectified, I think. Now let's take something different in BD I'm going to synchronize B uh, VCO2 to VCO1 modulating the time input of the delay.
with tracking it will catch the signal of the clock so it's kind of tracking also the clock the delay is also tracking the clock which is the start of the clock it's restarting uh, actually the delay every time a clock comes in so it's nice I unplugged here the time, the CV, the signal going into the CV of delay time, I took it out, delay is on zero. What I did is taking a square and rectifying it on input AC, I took a sine wave on input BD, the rectified rectangles go in, into the clock as well. And I take CV, uh, an LFO assigned it to CV1 to modulate oscillator 1. So it acts really strange. because I take the clock of AC so if, if the frequency is slow then the clock is too slow too you know I could also take instead the, this input signal of BD to clock it and then it will be only dependent on this which is not dependent on any modulation